Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jeff, and I'm here with Jerry, Lucian, Grant, and Winnie. We're from Taiwan, representing National Taiwan University, and it's our pleasure to present a brief analysis on La Kafa International. We issue a sale recommendation on La Kafa with a one-year target price of 76 NT dollars, derived from EV over EBITDA ratio, and implies a 35% downside. Two reasons support our rating. For one, future possible growth will be disappointing. For another, peer comparison suggests downside. La Cafa International is established in 2004 and offers various kinds of food and beverage through five brands. Among them, Chat Time is a Taiwanese bubble tea brand franchise worldwide. It is the company's current core business and accounts for over 90% of the company's total revenue. Enzu is a just established pork chop restaurant franchise from Japan. It is a currently growing business and accounts for over 4% of total revenue within its half year operation. Back to chat time. If we break down its revenue by region, we could see that Southeast Asia would be its top revenue contributor, followed by Australia, Taiwan, and North America. With all four regions being said, we could therefore see how the company executes its expansion strategy, which is by focusing on Asian populated regions when it comes to regions outside Asia. And if we further break down its revenue by stores, both Taiwan and Australia focus on direct selling, while Southeast Asia and North America mainly focus on regional agents. Revenue stores would therefore include food ingredient sales and one-time agency fee. Over the past few years, La Cafa International has signed several regional agency contracts and received large amount of one-time agency fees. These agency fees has boosted chart time to be growing at a figure of 35%, and this mainly attributed to the company's 40% growth rate. However, in the near future, we expect there will be less agency fees, since the company has been covering most of Asian populated region outside Asia. Therefore, chart time will be growing at a figure of 9%, and this will for sure influence the company's future growth a lot. For Southeast Asia, we believe the company has been boasting about its expansion plan. Let's take a look at its past record. You can see there's a huge difference between its initial guidance and its actual expansion tracks. Three years in a row, the company has failed to meet its words. So together with our analysis, in 2016 and 2017, you can see there's, you can see there's a 10% and a 22% lower total store number. This represents a growing revenue deficit from 6% to 17%. Australia and Taiwan are not ma their main focuses in the near future, according to the company. So we would expect the growth remain flattish in the near future. For North America, as shown on this map, green dots are where Asia reside. And the region in orange are where the company has either, has, has either uh, sign a, re a regional agency contracts or utilize a strategy of franchise. So we only expect smaller amount of agency fees from region in green. So future expansion in North America will mainly rely on new store openings. So we could furthermore, we could furthermore expect the growth driver to transfer from high margin agency fee to low margin food ingredient sales. And this will transform chart time into a lower profitability business. With chart time's future possible growth being disappointing, the company tried to find its way out for new growth drivers, and that's why Enzo came in. Thus, La Cafa International identified a Japanese pork chop brand, Enzo. Considering Enzo's previous attractive store sales, La Cafa International franchised Enzo in 2014 and continued its expansion in Taiwan. The company expects to sustain Enzo's monthly store sales when it is expanding. However, we hold conservative view toward its goal. We find it unrealistic when looking at similar players in the same market. We selected Saboten and Pinada as benchmark, which are the two largest players in Taiwan pork chop market. They provide similar price level, product mix, and store expansion track with Anzu. Looking at their historical sales track, we can realize that monthly store sales is not possible to be maintained when store expands. As a result, we believe that Anzu with similar features mentioned above, will not be able to maintain its monthly store sales, which would decrease from current 3.5 million 
to 2.2 million in 2016. When monthly store sales continuously decreases, the total revenue from Anzu would be 580 million in 2017, representing a 40% difference from the company's expectation. The decrease in sales would also affect earning. From 2014 to 2016, Enzu even dragged down the company's net income due to its initial high cost. As a result, the company's net income CAGR from 2014 to 2016 will not keep its previous pace. Based on the reasons above, we believe that the introduction of Enzu is not enough to compensate the slowing growth in chart time. From a financial perspective, we have some bad news for investors. As you can see, gross margin is going down for the next few years, and this is mainly caused by Chatham's expansion. Chatham's new store openings mainly contributes low margin food ingredient sales, and this encumbers gross margin performance. And the new business, Enzu, could make the situation even worse. Return on equity could also slide down to 12.6% in 2015 and will remain flattish for the next few years. Worsening profitability makes it less and less worthwhile for investors to invest in the company. From the market's perspective, we believe current market is too optimistic on the company's expansion. Both our operating margin and EPS estimates are lower than the consensus. Our target price is 76 NT dollars, representing 35% downside. We use EV over EBITDA multiple to derive our target price. We select eight companies in total as the closest comparables for La Cafa International. These companies either provide similar beverages or use similar franchising and agency business models. We believe the median of our comps, 9.7 times, is a fair multiple for La Cafa. Other valuation methods like DDM, ROIC, and free cash flow all support our sale recommendation. We believe the current market 16.2 times is actually a little bit too high because it is already close to the maximum uh, of our comps range. And let's take a look at the EV over EBITDA matrix down below in the middle. This matrix is derived with free cash flow comparable company analysis, and ROIC. Our 9.7 times is actually the median number of this matrix, which we believe is reasonable. Therefore, we have faith in our target price and our sell recommendation. With our sell recommendation being said, we reinforce our bearish outlook with the following risk analysis, based on impacts and likelihoods, and assuming the following four risk materialize. We analyze how stock price will be affected by these scenarios. For a company's biggest revenue contribution region, Southeast Asia, higher GDP growth and higher consumer expenditure would increase Chatham's total store number in this region. For a company's current target market, North America, signing new agency contracts would bring in one-time agency fee and therefore increases company's revenue. On the other hand, System upgrades and new distribution center would also benefit the company through better operating efficiency. So combining all four risks, we arrive at a stock price of $90-$20, which is, well, obviously still in the range of sale rating. La Cafa International, with its disappointing possible growth in the future, and with peer comparison suggesting downside. Ladies and gentlemen, Bubble Tea Bubble is about to burst. With a target price of $76, we recommend a sale rating. We are National Thai University. Thank you for listening, and we are now ready for questions.